So throughout life, we seem to go through various veils of understanding. We see this depicted at the temple with the Adam and Eve presentation. We see it in our, our own lives. You have a child who's born into this world. It's like a empty hard drive. And the only information it gathers is what it feels, observes, hears, and though it can't comprehend words spoken, it can comprehend whether it is a positive or negative tone, it can uh, detect stress, things like that. Uh, but it takes time for a baby to develop into a child and to learn what words mean because it was by God's word that all things were created. It's words that rule everything. It was a single word or, or, or selection of words from Elon Musk just the other day, which um, saved the earth from undergoing an escalation in the, the war with Russia and Ukraine. Apparently, Ukraine wanted to utilize the satellite chain um, that he has, the what, Starlink, or I can't remember what it's called. Wanted to access those satellites in order to use a drone to go bomb some unsuspecting Russian naval force in the Black Sea. And it essentially would have been like a Pearl Harbor. And Elon Musk goes, uh, no, no, don't do that. No, uh, so he was accused of, uh, turning off Starlink, or I think that's what's called Starlink, and not allowing the Ukrainians, these victims, to, uh, defeat their foes, the Russians. And he fires back going, no, no, I just simply did not allow them access. I never turned it on for them. It's, uh, it's not, it's not supposed to be used for war. It's supposed to be used to, to access the internet, to do homework, to, to make life easier, not life harder. We don't do stupid things with our technology. So, I mean, good thing that somebody with that kind of power is in that position now. How long will it last? Yeah, it's a pumpkin. It's big. Yeah, it's getting big. We have pumpkins growing. <laughs> yeah. Lots of bees. So, my point is, is that throughout life we access various veils of understanding. And... Today is September the 11th. We all know what happened. A while back. And uh, I think with what the public are starting to see and recognize with the... I'm not sure what I can and can't say. With the... the sickness that we all endured um, and the, 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 the scare show the, the whole you need to be terrified thing and with the, the fires over in Hawaii right now there's people starting to awaken up from their awful situation not so much spiritually but they're recognizing things physically the Lord, unfortunately, causes or allows things to happen physically to awaken us, to, tr to test us, to trial us, to test us out. I mean, you always test something before you utilize it, right? You also have to uh, have your Zion's camp. 
And there's some people who don't recognize the writing on the wall. They don't see it ahead of time. But, and so because of that, they need a great shaking. And I wonder if people are going to start looking at a couple things differently now. Like, the past few years, um, September the 11th, that one year, where we uh, coincidentally had lots of mysterious things just like this fire occur. Um... I think maybe people will start realizing. Maybe a partial veil is being lifted. And speaking of veils being lifted, I've often wondered about Adam and Eve and them going into that lone and dreary world, dreary world, that if that fall, that fall was out of the presence of the Lord. We we're essentially veiled from the presence of the Lord. And that lone and dreary world where death entered, well, death existed. So what does that exactly mean? To me, I personally, I haven't heard others say this, but my personal view of this um, is that they be, their eyes became veiled. The life and light which would generally be recognized by someone in a state of innocence or, or, or uh, someone who is able to commune face to face with God. And now there's a fall from that and you need intermediaries who are uh, servants of Christ and the Father, namely our the brethren, yeah. prophets, hey. that these um, that they can see behind corners, they can see things because they are seers, prophets, and revelators. So there is this detachment. We see this detachment with us in our own lives. And so we have personal revelation. And sometimes we have this time of crisis where we're like, this is changing my paradigm of belief. What's going on? Well, we've accessed knowledge offered to us. And, and now we're placed under covenant to endure in faith, act upon what we believe and continue forward until further light and knowledge is given to us, as is promised. And then our prophets come to offer this further light and knowledge. Not only do they come to testify and speak to these things, but it's almost like there is an allowance of access beyond that veil, beyond that cloud. I've also wondered if, if the cloud spoken of in scripture is simply a veil. That we know the spirit world is upon this earth simultaneously with us. And if we're to come with Christ in the cloud, but wait, he's coming from the heavens. So... Perhaps that is up in the sky. <laughs> uh, and perhaps that's for a vantage point. We see uh, King Benjamin get up on a, a great tower to speak to his people so that all may see and all may hear. But then he sends out written uh, publishings of what was spoken to go out to the people who were too far away. Jesus has his apostles repeat what he says, echo what he says when he speaks to a great population, but he's also, he's not down in some great valley, he's he's up on a mountaintop, he's somewhere visible so people can 
see, but then they hear a little bit later, probably through the, the repeated voice of a, an apostle or prophet. So uh, I have no idea if the city of Enoch, if they're just simply behind a veil yet among us and they're witnessing us and they're desiring to help us. Perhaps the, all that is needed is them to testify, do what Enoch did and go and testify to the, speak with the Lord and, and say, hey, look, these guys, I think, I think we're finally compatible. I think they're living the covenant life. I, th I think they're prepared now. And is that when we fall upon each other's necks and kiss each other and, and see that we're like one another? It's because we're covenant. I don't know. It makes sense. Um, to me, that seems very practical. I don't know how everything works. I just know that it does work. And that's all that we do need to know. I, I look forward to that day that where, where uh, the Lord sees fit to lift that veil, rent that veil, not only to visit justice upon others, but also to, to save us who are under the thumb of tyrants and manipulators and narcissists. I wonder if the only place that people find peace is in Zion. I wonder if it's as practical as the Lord renting the veil coming and people seeing, oh my gosh, that, that the only place where the wicked find safety will be in hell. They have to hide themselves. It's the only place they feel safe. The light casts out the darkness. President Nelson said, we can literally improve. What did he say? We could literally improve the world or we can make the world a better place. And I think it's, We've done it more efficiently than any other organization there has been simply because we're led by God and that we had a preparation period, all these things. It's unique to me that the church has come forth just like how Christ um, Mary, that the whole situation, if you haven't seen some of my first videos, I have parallels between the Christmas or the, uh, the Christmas story and, and, uh, the second coming and the restoration. But essentially it's, you have Mary who is pregnant, who's with child, uh, with Christ. But be, before they're allowed to consummate the marriage. So th they're kind of going to be this almost like a social outcast. And it, it's going to be hard. They're, they're going to look, oh, you tainted, you broke your covenants. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. Those guys. They, they couldn't keep to themselves, could they? So you can imagine that kind of mockery occurring. Maybe even Joseph unable to find a particular work that he really does have to be a carpenter or a, a, a man who works with his hands, a stonemason, someone who is a handyman in all things, a builder. Essentially, he's in this state of perpetually helping people build extensions under their homes for those who are married and assisting them and, and building home. Kind of what Christ says 
and my father's house there are many mansions. Joseph, in a way, has an echo to God the Father. God the Father chose correctly. And the virgin, well, look at the restoration. We see this church coming forth with a prophet. Nobody trusts the prophet. And people say, well, your church, it's just copied from all these other things. It's tainted. It, it's, uh, it's been a harlot. It's, it's not a virgin. It's, it's not pure. When in fact it really is. Yet it bears forth Christ and the kingdom of God. How unique that this has been shown to us continues. How unique that even Joseph in Egypt was accused, falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, only then to come forth and be the savior for not only Egypt, but Israel. Same thing can be said for this church. We, we have been rejected, yet we have dutifully served, and the time will come where it will be recognized what gifts we do have, and Egypt will call upon us And by doing so, that will be the final ingathering of scattered Israel. Possibly. Just my own, my own speculation and, and looking. So, are we prepared for this? And it's funny, um, man, there's another channel. Brother Palmer's mentioned it a couple times. Um... I think it's called Zion or Bust. He, the guy there, was actually talking on, on this very subject about, uh, but, but he came at it from a different angle, and I just thought, my goodness, that's really validating for me. But above all, what, what testifies to me the most is the fact that myself, others who are not scholarly, people or articulate or professionals, uh, any particular thing, um, bibli biblically, we're not, we don't hold these grand positions in the church, yet we are having revelation and understanding come to us, albeit filtered through our current limited understanding, and it it gets validated by someone else or something else. And I've, I've heard scholars come to the same conclusion that I've had on a couple things, but from completely different viewpoints, which testifies that the Lord teaches us through the Spirit that all the intelligence and learning of the world will amount to nothing if we have not the Spirit. And I believe that very much. This is how you can have the most, most uh, basic form of human. Some farmer in the middle of nowhere who only reads and hears about a little, but has the scriptures and has prayer and a testimony of Christ. And he can come to a, a greater knowledge and understanding of the matter of life and, and creation and all things more than any academic with all the study in the world but lacking spirit so many wonderful scholars but then I hear them try to understand something that we know to be true through revelation and it just it, it kind of it it kind of gives you this format of where the things that they actually do end up believing that that 
also agrees with Revelation, yet they don't even know it. But then there's ones that don't. And it kind of gives you this template of, of how to discern and understand um, some of the things that even they teach and learn. Anyways, veils are being lifted. Various forms. Kids, through their adolescence, every time they learn something new, a veil is lifted. We come to a greater understanding of something. Veil is lifted. Veils are continuing to be lifted until that very point when Christ shall rent the veil and the wicked shall mourn and hide themselves because they cannot stand the light. It may be as simple as, as bringing it all in and having accountability and living in righteousness and peace and having liberty, the wicked themselves will cast themselves away, underground, away from society, because society, being righteous, will be harmful to their eyes and ears because it doesn't validate their wickedness. Anyways, it's just so natural how how these things come. And I hope we recognize the, the small little miracles here and there. And that'll be it for now. I, I just wanted to share some thoughts that were on my mind. And perhaps you're, oh yeah, you finally caught up. Thanks. But take care.